Hello, my name is Jimmy and this is the 2023 Ford Raptor R. Yes, underneath this hood, there's a supercharged V8 making 700 horsepower. So let me tell you everything that you need to know before we go for a drive, but we'll be quick. The Raptor R is Ford's answer to Ram's TRX because the TRX was, well, Ram's way of saying, hey, I'm going to eat your Raptor with that little 3.5 EcoBoost. Thus why this exists. On the front end, well, it doesn't look too far away from the standard Raptor. Yes, you do get additional hood bulge on the top. Yes, there are some graphics on the hood and you get a little R on the front grille, but it's very, very similar. And there's nothing wrong with that. You got beautiful Raptor headlamps as well as these rigid fog lamps on the bottom. On the side, all Raptor R's comes with 37 inch tire options. So you get big 18 inch wheels with bead locks and of course the 37 inch KO2s. Behind all that, you do get the Fox suspension with the electronically continuously variable compression dampling that's on the shock itself. The front fender, you do have a real hood extraction vent here. That's kind of cool. Get some running boards on the side just to make ingress a little bit easier. You do get proximity door locks on the front, but sadly not on the rear. And then along the truck bed, I do really like this graphic on here. LED tail lamps, do exhaust on the bottom. I mean, it just looks the business, doesn't it? I mean, like typical Raptor fashion, you have one cab size and one truck bed size. That is it, no other additional options. The tailgate itself, it is damped, which is of course a very nice option. And you get the Ford step to make, well, whatever you want to get in and out of the bed a lot easier. But let's check out that interior. All right, the back seats of the F-150. I'm 5'11", and I mean, there's plenty of space back here because it is a big crew cab. Plenty of headroom, plenty of legroom, it's super spacious. And I got heated seats back here, which is really, really nice. And of course, you can fold up the seats and there's storage that's lockable on the bottom as well. Really, really nice touch. However, if you're thinking of fitting child seats back here, I am a child passenger safety technician here in Canada. And well, it's a crew cab F-150. So there's plenty of space here for your kiddos. As you can see, I was able to fit three child seats across here. Not a problem at all. The doors open nice and wide, allowing you to have easy access to the cabin itself. So either an infant seat or the convertible, it shouldn't be a problem. There's two sets of lower anchors, one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. Very easy to access those. As for the upper anchors, like all trucks, they're just a little bit tougher, but once you have it installed, it shouldn't be a problem. But let's head up front. All right, the front seats of the Raptor are these Recaro seats. They're heated as well as cooled amazing seats and it has the Bang & Olufsen speakers in the headrest itself. Super, super cool. They're just terrific seats. In front of me, I got my typical Raptor steering wheel. So you do get the orange stripe in the center just to let you know exactly which way is, well, straight. And you get all the buttons that you need along with the Raptor button on the left as well as the suspension and exhaust buttons here on the right, allowing quick and easy access to well, all the parameters that you really need without diving into drive modes, which you still can. Behind you get a full digital cluster, beautiful cluster. It shows you a lot of information and it is configurable as well. No heads up display, but that's okay. Main infotainment, it's a nice widescreen infotainment system here. It does have the latest Ford Sync. Unlike the Lightning and some other F-150s, you don't get the giant iPad display that's on the center, but I think this is well, just a little bit more usable because there's more physical buttons on here. And I'm sure a lot of owners will appreciate that. You got everything else that you need. Your drive mode selectors on the bottom, your four wheel drive controls, trail mode, like everything is very easily accessible there. And of course your 10 speed shifter that has a button that you can press to lower it down so that you can have a workspace in the center if you so need. It's a very well appointed cabin for the price of the, you know, the Raptor R, you kind of expect that. And it absolutely is. Sure, there are nicer interiors. Like I got to admit the Ram interior is a little bit fancier, but I think in here it's very, very usable and it's very, very nice. But let's talk about the engine before we go for a drive. I know you're waiting for that. Under the hood, it's a 5.2 liter supercharged V8 making 700 horsepower, 640 pound-feet of torque. Yes, it's essentially the GT500 engine. Yes, it has been reworked a little bit, 
just for this application. The only thing is, well, fuel economy. If you so care, in the city, it's rated for 10 miles per gallon. You're not likely going to get that. And the main reason why you won't get that kind of fuel economy is because, well, have a listen. <laughs> Yeah, when you have a supercharged V8, fuel economy kind of goes out the window because all you want to do is listen to that engine note. And it's such a glorious engine note, isn't it? <laughs> and this is just in normal mode. It's not in sport or Baja. In Baja, it's just ridiculously loud. This absolutely insane i love this truck because of that because there's really no reason why this truck exists at least here in vancouver i mean vancouver is a relatively small city there's not a lot of like off-road trails around there are some like really nice stuff that's about an hour or two away but you do have to travel a little bit outside of the city to do that but in the city it's not well it's not the greatest truck city and having a Raptor, it's just kind of ridiculous. It's wide, it's so wide. <laughs> parking this in a just a normal parking spot and you can barely get out of the vehicle because of, well, just how wide the vehicle is. It's so insane, but I absolutely love it. In terms of how it drives though, I mean, the dampers, they're so, so good. They're so comfortable, they're so compliant, they're so soft. You can stiffen things up with the button here on the steering wheel to move it to sport. And it does make it a little bit firmer if you want it to. But it's not about that, is it? It's just about the power. It's about putting that foot down having 700 horsepower at your disposal whenever you need. I gotta admit, this week, this week has been very, very expensive. I'm averaging 28 liters for 100 kilometers right now. I'm not sure exactly what that translates to in miles per gallon, but I don't think it reaches 10. <laughs> but I don't care. I'm having so much fun in this. And that's what the Raptor R is about. It's about fun. You don't buy a truck of this magnitude because it's economical. It makes sense. You're buying this truck because... <laughs> oh, I don't want to give this back. I don't. I mean, this, this, this is absolutely insane. Yes, let's be honest. For most people, if you really want a Raptor, the regular one is, it's good enough because the regular one, it's much more economical on everyday drives. You don't really have to worry as much as this, but there's no replacement for a V8. Then you slap a supercharger on it. <laughs> yep. I'm, uh, I'm very much sold on this. The question that a lot of people are going to be asking, this or TRX? Let's be honest. You can't go wrong with either of them. Both amazing, amazing trucks. It comes down to if you want a Ram or if you want a Ford. Let's be honest. Because at the end of the day, both trucks are they're just astonishing super trucks that will do everything that you want. And Ram lovers, you're gonna love the Ram. Ford lovers, you're gonna love the Raptor R. There's no fault with either of them, let's be honest. But that's really it, I'm gonna close this off. Oh, pricing, I should have mentioned that somewhere down the line here. About 150,000 Canadian dollars. It's, uh, it's not cheap, but I mean, for 700 horsepower, 
It's a lot cheaper than like a Lamborghini Aventador that also makes 700 horsepower. So there's that. <laughs> In any case, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and enjoy some more sounds from this amazing V8.